Have you ever been coding in a library or a framework and sometimes you just wish a particular function existed or wished a particular function worked in a slightly different way? Uh, I do this all the time and in this video I'm going to walk you through uh, one of the utility functions I created for a project that I'm working on. Um, and I forget where I heard this, but I, I like to think of this as dream code, right? You, you think of what what is the best possible API that could exist for this particular library or framework and then try to make it happen. So in this video, I'm going to show you an example of that. We're going to dive into writing some backend API functions and also we'll get into uh, TypeScript generics so that our dream code has some really good type safety. So let's dive in. My name is CJ. Welcome to Syntax. So I've been building out a full stack app with this framework called Nuxt, which is a full stack view framework. It's essentially like Next.js, but for view. Um, and I've been working with it. And Nuxt is actually built on top of a framework called Nitro. And you might have heard of Nitro because it's also used inside of Tanstack Start and Solid Start. And Nitro itself is built on top of H3, which are framework agnostic ways for building backend route handlers. Um, and so to show you this example, we're actually just going to be using Nitro with H3, so it's a little bit paired back. We won't be looking at any view code today. It's all just backend code. So here in my Nitro app, I have a couple of endpoints, and Nitro is pretty easy to get used to. You could think of it kind of like Express or Hono. It's a way of building uh, backend endpoints. You can see here in the server folder, we have a routes folder, and then I have this index.git.ts file. And this just exports an event handler. So a define event handler comes from H3, and it allows us to define a backend event handler. And because this file has git in the name, this will respond whenever this API receives a git request on the index route. And in this case, it's just going to respond with a JSON object. So pretty simple stuff. Let's see this in action. So if I head over here and then just make a git request to localhost 3000, we get back hello world. So it's a very simple endpoint. This is what you can do with Nitro and H3. But what we really care about is what's here in our greeting.post file. So this is a file that will respond to post requests on slash greeting. And essentially, we take in a request body that has a name property on it, and we validate it. So read validated body is built into H3. Essentially, it'll stream in that body and then in turn pass it to schema.safe parse, which comes from Zod. And then we get back our validation result. And if there was a validation error, meaning the name property is missing, we set the status code to 422 and then just respond with an error. But if there was no error, we actually use the data and then just respond with a greeting that says hello name. So to see this in action, if we send a greeting with an empty body, we can see that we get back this Zod error that says name is required. But if we pass in the name and send it, it responds with hello name. So this is our function. But as I've been building out APIs with Nux, which uses Nitro and H3 behind the scenes, uh, I've been defining event handlers. And this piece right here can get very repetitive and cumbersome, right? Because for every single route where I want to validate the body, I have to write this code. Pretty often, I also want to validate the incoming query parameters or validate the params that are in the path. And you could expect that as I have more and more routes, this code is going to be in more and more places. So there'd be a lot of copy pasting. There'd be a lot of code duplication. And so this is the one piece that I just couldn't settle with and I wanted something better. Um, and on that topic of dream code, really my dream code is, is something like this. And it's kind of inspired by Hono because they have validation middleware. But it would be really great if I could do something like this. If I could say, let's grab the body from events.context.validated and then use that validated body right here. And so inside of H3, this context object here, you can put anything you want onto it. So typically you might have auth middlewares that put like session data or user data or other things like that. Um, but because of that, you can see that all of this gets the any type. So my code isn't even complaining right now because it is possible that this property could exist. But this is the kind of code that I want to write. And of course, I would need to have a custom function. So something like define validated event handler. And then that would need access to the schema. So we could, for instance, like pass it in as the first argument. And then we could write code that looks like this. And so for every other endpoint where we need to validate the incoming request body, we could use this little helper function and not have to have this boilerplate in every spot. And so this is the dream code that I want to actually implement. But we also want it to be type safe, right? So we'll implement this function and we'll get it working, but then we'll work on type safety. And that will deal with some generics. So it, it'll get pretty interesting. So let's grab this code that we pulled out. 
because that's going to live inside of define validated event handler. We are essentially creating an abstraction, right? We're hiding away that validation code because all we care about as programmers is passing in that schema and we want it to take care of the rest. So here in the utils folder, I have a function defined inside of define validated event handler. It's empty right now, but we need to get it working. So first of all, I'm gonna throw this code in here because it will need to run at some point. And then this will need to return a call to define event handler. Again, this is the thing built into H3 that lets us define these handlers. And then I'll move my code inside of there. I'll get access to the event, make this an async function. Okay, we're a little bit closer. Now we need access to that schema, so we'll accept it as an argument. In this case, this will be of type Zod type. So that looks good. And if we look back over here, let's actually import that function. And we can see we're on our way, right? So we're passing in the schema, good. But we also want to accept an event handler. So our function needs to take in that handler. Now I won't add the type for now, it's just the any type, but this is a function that accepts an event. And so what we can do is if the body was valid, we can actually just call that handler that we passed in and then pass it the event. And then right before that, we can update the context, right? So right before we call it, we can say event.context.validated is an object where the body is result.data, like so. This should work. Now we don't have any type safety yet, right? Handler is still the any type. And if we look back over here, it TypeScript isn't complaining, but body and validated are still the any type. But if I've written everything correctly, we should at least have this utility function now. So let's try it out. So back over here in Insomnia, if I make a post request to greeting with no body, I get that validation error. And if I pass in a valid body, it works. We get back the message. Okay, now let's work on getting the actual types to flow through. So handler is just a function that accepts an event. If we hover over the event here, because we're using define event handler, the types are flowing through. So I know that that event object needs to be of type h3 event. So I could type this to be a function that takes in an event that is of type h3 event. And in this case, just returns anything. Now I do need to import h3 event from h3. Like so, so now that's happy. Now, right now I have the return type as any, and technically I could just put the actual type on here. So you can see define event handler returns event handler. So technically we could specify the type here and that should be fine because now this is actually typed and we can actually pass in that. Um, but what I'm curious about is what is the return type of event handler? And there is a utility function built into TypeScript called return type where you can pass in a function type and it will tell you what the return type is. And in this case, it's any. So under the hood, they actually do type it as any because your event handlers could return anything. So because of that, I am going to, instead of specifying it as event handler, I'll specify it as a function that takes an event, which is of type h3 event, and then returns any. And the reason I'm doing this is because we will in turn need to override that context type. But now the types are a little bit better because this thing actually has a type and it actually accepts that event, which has the correct type. So that's great. But now I want to override the type of this context property here on the h3 event. So for now, let's define a type up here called a validated event. And this validated event will extend the h3 event, but it will be a composite type because we're also going to override the context. So here we can say the context is of type h3 context. And so if I hover over context here, we can see that the type of this is h3 event context, and we should be able to get access to that from h3 as well. So here I can say context is of type h3 event context and expand the type. So here I want to say that it should have a validated property and this validated object should have a body and that body is going to be of type data. So it's going to be the resulting data type of safely parsing that incoming request body. And so built into Zod is this z.infer. So let's import Zod real quick. And if you've worked with Zod, you know that you can typically pass in some schema here. But right now, we don't know what that schema is. So this is where generics come into play. And so what I can say is this validated event will accept a type S, and then we can then use z.infer and pass that type in. But you can see TypeScript is complaining because we need to make sure that S is of the Zod type. So here I can say it extends Zod type. And so now I have this nice little utility type where I can pass in a Zod type and it's gonna give me back this h3 event that has annotated its context here 
to give it a fully typed validated uh, object with the type of that specific body. So now if we want to use this type, I'm going to use it here instead of h3 events. So we'll pass in validated event, but we do have to pass in the schema as a type argument. And so how are we going to do that? We'll actually make our function itself generic. So if I make this generic and it takes in a schema, which also extends a Zod type, now I can use this type right here and the types will flow through. So I'll show you on the other side when we're actually calling this function, we don't even need to define it using generics because TypeScript is smart enough to see that the first argument I pass in is a Zod type. And so now it knows what S is. And then when it creates this type, it's gonna know what S is right here to be able to infer that underlying validated type. And then the last thing we'll do is just a type assertion. So because I put that context.validated.body on there, now it is of type validated event. So I can grab my type here and then just use a type assertion that say, hey, that event is actually a validated event. And if I've done this correctly, on the other side, the types should now flow through. Okay, so no type errors, but if I hover over validated, Look at that, the type has flowed through. And if I take a look at body, it has the validated type there. And what's great is it's all flowing through from the schema here. So if I add more properties on this, like favorite number, for instance, now if I look at the body type, that type is flowing through as well. But we've done it, we have our dream code. So now anytime I'm defining an event handler and I need to validate the incoming body, all I have to do is pass in the schema and everything else is taken care of. But of course we should test it out it should behave exactly as before. So if I pass in an empty body, we get back that Zod validation error. But if I pass in a valid body, we get back the response. So this is awesome, um, but we could also take it a step further. So right now I'm only validating the body, but let's, let's, let's dream again. What if define validated event handler, instead of just taking a single schema, what if it took in an object of options where we could say validate the body with this schema, and let's just rename this to body schema. Uh, but let's say we want a schema to validate our query parameters. So let's call this the query schema. And then maybe favorite number is in the query parameters. We could coerce it from a string to a number. And then maybe I also want to pass in this query schema here. And so now if this code did work, I would have a really easy way to specify my validators for all the different types of things, the query, the body. I could also pass in, let's say, params, and then it could validate the params in the path. But now, now we're dreaming, right? <laughs> now we should be able to not only extract off body, but also extract off the validated query. Now I'm gonna show you how I implemented this, but if I've inspired you, go off and try to implement this yourself. On the surface, it could be very easy, but I will say that if you want these to be like optional, right? So sometimes you only wanna pass in the body schema. Sometimes you only wanna pass in the query schema. That's where the TypeScript generics get a little bit trickier, but I encourage you to go try to implement this, try to test out your TypeScript skills, but now I'll show you how I implemented this. Okay, this is where things get a little, little bit silly with TypeScript. Um, first of all, we now are accepting in an object called validations that has those three properties, right? The body, query, or params. But like I said, I want all three of them to be optional because sometimes I only wanna validate the query or sometimes I only wanna validate the body. So we've set those to optional. You can then see I have three different type arguments. The first one is for the body, but it can be undefined, right? Because you might not pass in that schema. Then we have Q, which is the query schema, and then P, which is the param schema. And with TypeScript generics, you can actually assign a default value. So here I've set all of them to undefined. And so by default, they're all undefined unless you actually pass in a specific schema for any one of them. From there, I also defined this validated event type in line. So you might not have realized you could do this, but your type arguments can also define types too. They don't have to be themselves type arguments. And I did this so that way I wouldn't have to pass B, Q, and P to another type as type arguments. But we have the same overridden H3 event and H3 event context here. But here we're using conditionals on the type. So if we did pass in a schema for body, then B extends Zod type will be true, which means the resulting validated.body property will be the inferred schema from B. Otherwise, if we didn't pass in a body schema, it's gonna be undefined. And the reason I care about this is because on the other side where we're using the code, right? Because if I only pass in a body validation schema, I want query and params to be of the unknown or undefined type. I want to get a type error if I try to access validated.query or validated.params 
and, and I didn't pass in a, a query schema or a param schema. And so we're using this ternary type for each one of these. So if we did pass in a schema for it, we'll infer that type. From there, it's just a matter of calling all of the validators. So I have a map that is keeping track of all of the errors for the body, the query, and the params. And so if we passed in a schema for the body, then we will read the body, run the parser, and if it was not successful, store that error inside of this map. And we do that same thing for the query and then also for the router params. But then if it was valid, we keep track of it in this map here. So we set that validated data for the body, we set it for the query, and then we set it for the params. And then if we have any errors at all, we set the status code to 422, and then we show the errors for body, params, or query, depending on if those were defined and if they exist in the map. If there were no errors, then we can just grab all of that validated data. So right, we're storing all of the validated data in this map here. So we can use from entries to get an object that will have a body property, a query property, and a params property if the validated data exists for each one of those. Okay, so there, there's a lot of other ways to implement this. If you gave it a try and tried to implement yourself, I'd love to see how you did it. So let me know in the comments. But now if we take a look on the other side, we can see how it's used. So over here, you can see I can pass in the body schema. I can pass in query. And if I hover over body, it has the correct type. But if I comment out body, now that type doesn't exist and it's of type unknown. And so this is the type completion that we were going for, where essentially only the things that we passed in a schema for are actually accessible from our validated object here. And so here I should be able to get access to query and say um, your favorite number is, and then pass in query.favorite number. And of course we do want that body validation there. But again, if I comment off the schema here, then I get a type error because, hey, I don't know what query is because you didn't pass a schema for it. So this is the kind of type completion that I, that I wanted here. And now if we try out our endpoint, we should get a error because we didn't specify the query parameter. So yeah, favorite number needs to be specified in the query. So if I add the favorite number query parameter and set a value on it, it validates it and the handler runs and returns the message. And so that's mainly what I wanted to show you today. We dove a little bit into like TypeScript generics and also like higher order functions. And we've, we've got some curried functions going on here. Um, but ultimately, I kind of do want to just impart the, the idea of dream code onto you because if something doesn't exist, create it. Um, so if you enjoyed this, definitely drop a like, subscribe, leave a comment if you have any questions about what you saw here and stay tuned because I am going to be releasing a deeper dive video that shows how I built a full stack app with Nuxt and Nitro and H3. So stay tuned for that. All right, I'll see you in the next one.